Four years ago, Daniel's father was taken away by police and locked up in a Costa Rican prison. Like so many men in this community, he'd fallen into selling drugs as a way to help his family escape poverty. He was arrested and convicted, leaving his wife Jesse struggling to provide and his two boys without a father to guide them. Now 10 years old, Daniel does his best to look out for his little brother, Jeremy, but inside he's suffering because the person he wants most in the world is locked up in prison. He really needs his father. Daniel really needs his dad here with him. Daniel remains sad and withdrawn. He's lost interest in school and in other things he used to enjoy. He doesn't play much with other kids. He spends most of his time taking care of Jeremy, who struggles with many issues of his own. He's seven years old, and he sometimes fights with me. He doesn't behave. He never stops moving. Jeremy is a sweet and affectionate boy. He loves going to school, but his constant state of hyperactivity is so extreme that teachers cannot handle him. Jessie is at the breaking point. She works very hard cleaning houses, but she doesn't make enough money for food, clothing, and school supplies, much less for the counseling and support her children need. We spent two months where I had to tell the boys, either we buy school supplies or we eat. Because with my pay, you buy one thing or another. Jessie can't afford a proper house for her family. So the three of them live together in a concrete shack surrounded by junk. The space barely holds a bunk bed, a tiny table, a stove, and a bathroom. There's no privacy, no room for the boys to play safely. Whenever possible, the boys go to the streets outside their home to play. Jessie knows they have to go somewhere to run and burn off energy, but she worries constantly about gangs and drugs, terrified that they'll befriend older boys, be lured into using and selling drugs. Jessie keeps her boys as close as she can, but she has to work to put food on the table. She can't always be there to keep them safe. And without a dad, older kids and gangs may be the only role models they have to look up to. Of course I think about that a lot. Daniel, no. Daniel tells me he doesn't like hanging out with bad kids. But Jeremy, yes, Jeremy likes these older boys. I try to keep him away, but he tells me that they call to him. I tell him he's too young and shouldn't hang out with them. I'm scared. I'm scared because a girl got attacked who lived around here. I don't like to hang out with those people. It's very bad. Daniel's future is at risk. For now, he turns away from gangs, but he also shuts out his mother and teachers. He cannot focus in school. He is burdened with an emotional pain he does not know how to express. Me and my dad used to go out a lot and go everywhere together. We used to ride bicycles together. Or he would take me into town to look for things and he would buy stuff for me. For Daniel, no one can replace his father. But his father is not here. In his place is a void in this young boy's heart, a void waiting to be filled. The question that remains is with what? Drugs? Violence? Or hope and a chance at a better future? The kind of future that may not be possible without counseling. This is a mother who is worried about her children. She has a child who has been very depressed since his father has been in prison. He is wanting to die. He's very, very sad. So this is one of the needs, one of the biggest needs. Innocent children should not have to pay for the crimes of their fathers. Be the one to bring hope to a child like Daniel through your faithful support. <laughs>